Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's 8 o'clock on Friday the 17th of March, St Patrick's Day, Lesser Festival. If you're following the book, you'll find morning prayer during Lent towards the beginning, after prayer during the day. There's a, se- a section called morning evening prayer during the seasons, and uh, we are in there. Online at Arima's Daily Prayer or the Church of England's website, and one may download the words as app, uh, in an app formation or whatever, and style from... Um, wherever you get your apps for Apple or Android devices. I'm in the building and welcome to join me here, 8 and 6, any day. As a rule, do get in touch if you're coming from any distance, just in case we're not in on that particular morning or afternoon. You may join by Zoom, the code on the Blythe Church's website and uh, Facebook page. We're live streaming on their Facebook page and I will be recording the audio to upload onto my Dominic Global YouTube channel presently. I'm also on TikTok if you want to have a look for me there. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love, according to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy, to you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Song of Penitence, verses from Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, in your great goodness. According to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence, and righteous in your judgment. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me again the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your gracious spirit. Then shall I teach your ways to the wicked, and sinners shall return to you. Deliver me from my guilt, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 22, which we'll find at the back of the book, if that's where you're following, (coughs) is our appointed psalm this morning. Psalm 22. Be not far from me, O Lord. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me, and are so far from my salvation, from the words of my distress? O my God, I cry in the daytime, but you do not answer, and by night also, but I find no rest. Yet you are the Holy One, enthroned upon the praises of Israel. Our forebears trusted in you, they trusted, and you delivered them. They cried out to you and were delivered. They put their trust in you and were not confounded. But as for me, I am a worm and no man, scorned by all and despised by the people. All who see me laugh me to scorn. They curl their lips and wag their heads, saying, He trusted in the Lord, let him deliver him, let him deliver him, if he delights in him. But it is you that took me out of the womb, and laid me safe upon my mother's breast. On you was I cast ever since I was born. You are my God, even from my mother's womb. Be not far from me, for trouble is near at hand, and there is none to help. Mighty oxen come around me, fat bulls of Bashan close me in on every side. They gape upon me with their mouths, as it were a ramping and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water, all my bones are out of joint. My heart has become like wax, melting in the depths of my body. My mouth is dried up like a potsherd, my tongue cleaves to my gums. 
you have laid me in the dust of death. For the hounds are all about me, the pack of evildoers close in on me, they pierce my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones, they stand staring and looking upon me, they divide my garments among them, they cast lots for my clothing. Be not far from me, O Lord, you are my strength, hasten to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my poor life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, from the horns of wild oxen. You have answered me. I will tell of your name to my people. In the midst of the congregation will I praise you. Praise the Lord, you that fear him. O seed of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, O seed of Israel. For he has not despised nor abhorred the suffering of the poor. Neither has he hidden his face from them. <coughs> but when they cried to him, he heard them. From you comes my praise in the great congregation. I will perform my vows in the presence of those that fear you. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord shall praise him. Their hearts shall live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations shall bow before him. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he rules over the nations. <coughs> How can those who sleep in the earth bow down in worship, or those who go down to the dust kneel before him? He has saved my life for himself. My descendants shall serve him. This shall be told of the Lord for generations to come. They shall come and make known his salvation to a people yet unborn, declaring that he, the Lord, has done it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Be not far from me, O Lord. <coughs> Scrolling past our first reading to the Song of Manasseh, turning back in our books to morning prayer during Lent. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God the Most High, the Almighty. Lord Almighty and God of our ancestors, you who made heaven and earth in all their glory, all things tremble with awe at your presence before your great and mighty power. Immeasurable and unsearchable is your promised mercy, for you are God most high. You are full of compassion, long-suffering and very merciful, and you relent at human suffering. God, according to your great goodness, you have promised forgiveness for repentance to those who have sinned against you. The sins I have committed against you are more in number than the sands of the sea. I am not worthy to look up to the height of heaven because of the multitude of my iniquities. And now I bend the knee of my heart before you, imploring your kindness upon me. I have sinned, O oh God, I have sinned, and I acknowledge my transgressions. Unworthy as I am, you will save me <coughs> according to your great mercy. For all the host of heaven sings your praise, and your glory is forever and ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Full of compassion and mercy and love is God the Most High, the Almighty. <coughs> This from Kindle edition of Celebrating the Saint. Patrick was born somewhere on the west coast of Britain around the year 390 and was captured by Irish raiders when he was 16 years old and taken to Ireland as a slave. After six years, he escaped and seems to have gone to the continent. He eventually found his way back to his own family where his previously nominal Christian faith grew and matured. He returned to Gaul and was there trained as a priest, much influenced by the form of monasticism evolving under Martin of Tours. When he was in his early 40s, he returned to Ireland as a bishop and made his base at Armagh, which became the centre of his see. He evangelised the people of the land by walking all over the island, gently bringing news and women to a knowledge of Christ. Although he faced fierce opposition and pers possible persecution, he continued his missionary journeys. Despite being unsuccessful in his attempts to establish the diocesan system he had experienced in Gaul, his monastic foundations proved to be the infrastructure required to maintain the faith after his death, which occurred on this day in the year 460. Our first Bible reading is from Jeremiah, a relatively short passage today. We're looking for fifth, chapter 15 and going from verse 10 to the end. You'll find Jeremiah towards the beginning of the prophecy section of the Hebrew Scriptures between half and two-thirds of the way through. We're looking for the large number 15, chapter 15, and the small numbers in the text, verse 10 onwards. It's just before the counter can be read if you're following electronically. Woe is me, my mother, that you ever bore me, a man of strife and contention to the whole land. I have not lent, nor have I borrowed, yet all of them curse me. The Lord said, Surely I have intervened in your life for good. Surely I have imposed enemies on you in a time of trouble and in a time of distress. Can iron and bronze break iron from the north? 
Your wealth and your treasures I will give as plunder without price. For all your sins throughout all your territory, I will make you serve your enemies in a land that you do not know. For in my anger a fire is kindled that shall burn forever. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account I suffer insult. Your words were found and I ate them. Your words became to me a joy in the delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hand I sat alone. For you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wound incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back. And if you shall stand before me, <coughs> sorry, if you turn back, I will take you back. And you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you and not you who will turn to them. So I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they will not prevail over you, for I am with you to save you and deliver you, <coughs> says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. <coughs> I have to say I'm not entirely sure whether this reading pops up um, every year at this time, <coughs> but thinking that to the psalm we read, which um, for Christians seems to presage or speak of um, the death of Jesus on the cross, it talks about that casting lots and... Uh, I don't know where it actually says all my bones are broken, <coughs> which uh, Jesus' bones were not, can count all my bones. That's the expression. But um, if David was um, kidnapped as a youngster and uh, was in exile for a while and uh, found his aims and aspirations for the people of Ireland to be thwarted, um, then it's a fitting, fitting scripture for him, although possibly slightly too grievous. Poor Jeremiah was, uh, as people who were attempting to turn people's hearts towards caring for the environment and recognising the destruction of wildlife, those people who are endeavouring to um, turn the hearts of those who make decisions to provide adequate funding for our um, schools and hospitals and uh, road systems or goodness knows what else, care, social care. People who are trying to uh, encourage us to understand how responsible we are for the amount of carbon we produce, they might think like Jeremiah, they're hitting their heads against a brick wall. Equally, those who are trying to help us understand more about our faith, whether we would consider ourselves to be Christians or not, and uh, all of that is such a headache, and one can see why somebody like Jeremiah, like David, no, David, Patrick, um, were trying to um, engage people and change people's minds and finds it so frustrating when that doesn't happen. And they were going to go into exile, that's that business of an army of an iron army group with iron from the north. North was bad because they thought they faced east. That was their sort of concept of how the future worked in, com in relation to compass points. We don't really have such a concept, but the sun rose in the east, that's where the future came from. We stand facing the east, our left side faces the north, and the left was treacherous because anybody who fought with the blade in their left hand generally won. And all training, most training was towards fighting against somebody with a weapon in the right hand, the correct hand, and that continues today to some extent with our sort of left and right dexter and sinister description of left and right handedness. So moving on to John 8 from 48 to the end, scroll on to it if you're following electronically, if you're following the Bible you'll find John as the fourth gospel opening the second covenant, so if you open two thirds of the way through move towards the back, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. We have chapter 8 in that book, and we're starting at verse 48. So chapter 8 is the large number at the head of the paragraph. The verse 48 is the small number in the text. The Jews answered him, Are we not right in saying that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honour my father, and you dishonour me. Yet I do not speak, seek my own glory. There is one who seeks it, and he is judged. Very truly I tell you, whoever keeps my word will never see death. The Jews said to him, Now we know that you have a demon. Abraham died, and so did the prophets. Yet you say, whoever keeps my word will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham who died? The prophets also died. Who do you claim to be? Jesus answered, if I glorify myself, my glory is nothing. It is my father who glorifies me. He of whom you say he is our God, though you do not know him. But I know him. If I would say that I do not know him, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and I keep his word. Your ancestor Abraham rejoiced that he would see my day. He saw it and was glad. Then the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old and have you seen Abraham? Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple. So 
So we've got this continuation of the story of Jesus talking to Pharisees and others, presumably in the treasury of the temples. This goes back to um, John eight twelve to thirty, which we read on month, uh, Wednesday. No, yes, Wednesday morning. And as I said then, this description of being in the treasury suggests to me a bit like be a bit like a crypt in one of those sort of fancy cathedrals or um, London churches or ruinous cathedrals. Um, if you ever visit such a place, potentially, I don't know, but I would imagine it's a more intimate space than just a public concourse, sort of uh, upstairs or wherever it might be, to the left or the right. And uh, the discussion is intense and personal and uh, truthful. We're not told they're trying to trap him or trick trick him. And um, he first... talks about judging by human standards and he talks about um, them coming from the world and he comes from above. <clears throat> he keeps using the expression I am which is of course God's name, that's what God said when uh, Moses said who do I say has sent me. <clears throat> then yesterday we talked about, he talked about being a slave to sin and uh, who one's father is, he speaks of the father as God as the father, they talked about Abraham as the, their father. <clears throat> so this is sort of typical rabbinic debate and it's almost as if they're deliberately using language that the other won't understand and it's almost as if each is deliberately not understanding the other's language and today we move on not from the idea of father <clears throat> um, but to um, the idea of not dying it doesn't actually say eternal life but he says um, whoever keeps my word will never see death which is possibly slight, a slightly different thing. And what do we mean by death? Death there in those days, as today in English, I would imagine in the Hebrew or Aramaic, would have had its own layers of meaning. Now you're thinking of the madrigals, death meant climaxing during sex. Death might mean just um, dereliction or destruction. Um, I've got, it would be the death of me. That doesn't necessarily mean that it will kill me. It's an expression which might mean it will, it, might, it will finish me off, which doesn't actually mean we're going to die of it. But it's a sort of a, a very grave and poignant way of saying an end, a difficulty, a challenge. And of course, it means when our hearts stop beating. But it seems to me that if we read this thinking that Jesus is just saying, if you keep my word, you will never die. Um, we put ourselves in the place of the Jews, the Judeans, the Pharisees and the others who were talking to him and debating, it seems to me, theology in a, a sensible way. <clears throat> and then he um, hints not only is it a future-oriented infinity, but it also refers back. And he said that before Abraham was, I am. Um, is he meaning um, using the name of God? Is he meaning that he was? Is he meaning that he is God? <clears throat> and so we can decide for ourselves. He may just be deluded, it might just be linguistics, or he may actually be making some blasphemous claim. And uh, that may mean that we feel he needs to be put to death, or it may mean that we feel we need to believe on him. But uh, the majority of you there seems to be they picked up stones to throw at him. And so, as with much of the scripture, but particularly perhaps with John, we need to recognise that there's at least as much, if not more, truth in the metaphor than in the literal, historic account element of what Jesus is saying here. And of course, we could say, as those that believe on Jesus, that he was something of a time lord, is something of a time lord, and pops up to people today. People would say they had experiences of God in person with them. Today I was talking to somebody just a month or two back along those lines, but also we read in Hebrew scriptures that it's a tradition within Judaism that God appears in human form, um, even for those who don't believe that Jesus is God in human form. So it's only a short step, it seems to me, to suggest that that apparition of God in human form, the angel of the Lord, is in fact the Christ. So moving on to the response read back in that morning prayer during Lent. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. You are the God of my salvation. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O in you I hope all the day long. O my God, in you I trust. Remember, Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. The Song of Zechariah. 
Uh, you'll find the refrain. Um, if you are following in the book, you might have to look up the 17th of March. Sorry, perhaps, sorry, perhaps I should have said that earlier. And that would direct you to additional material in relation to Patrick, including the collect, which we will move on to uh, shortly. And um, it might be common of bishops, common of apostles, common of religious, I don't know. But uh, the refrain that I've got provided for me electronically begins, Christ gave them. Either do that, or just begin it, blessed be the Lord, and listen to the refrain as I read it for you. Christ gave them as a light to the nations, that his salvation might reach to the ends of the earth. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. <clears throat> he has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Christ gave them as a light to the nations, that his salvation might reach to the ends of the earth. Saviour sacrifice seal, three in one, one in three, as we read the psalm this morning, which uh, could have popped up probably anywhere in Lent. You've ch it's been chosen by the lectioneers for us to read on this Friday, where... Friday arguably needs to be even more <clears throat> lamentable than the ordinary Lenten readings <clears throat> as we get ever closer to our Good Friday reflections. And uh, we pray, God, that you, um, with thanks to you for that great um, exchange that you made on our behalf, that you who are all in all became broken, dissipated, nothing powerless, that we were nothing powerless and dissipated might be whole, complete and have agency. We thank you for that and we pray for all today who need to know some element of self-control, some element of self-determination, people in the hospital, people in refugee hotels, people being deported, people um, bobbing across the channel even as we speak, people being um, criminalised, infantilised, abused, We pray you will make a way where there is no way and give hope. From the World Council of Churches, prayers today continue for Denmark, Faroe Islands, Finland, Greenland, Iceland, Norway and Sweden. We thank for, for the support just for justice, peace and interfaith work that comes from those countries. And we pray that those who are affluent, they'll continue to make mm -hmm. the world and their societies more just for all. Christian Action Church Education, God of Justice, we thank you for every person engaged in peacemaking and reconciliation, and for all who are protesting against human rights abuses and urging rich nations to share with those who have very little. Please protect and encourage them with the signs of hope. With signs of hope. There we are praying for the modern day Jeremiah's. I pray that we as church will do our bit. <coughs> From Green Christian, religious belief has been central to the environmental justice movement since its start. Sharon Levine, a 70-year-old grandmother in Louisiana, taken on the plastic industry, is hailed, a modern day, is hailed as a modern-day prophet. It was a calling from God, said Levine, a retired special education teacher and grandmother of 12, her decision, of her decision to leave her comfort zone and fight the plant and the pollution that they would, they would emit into the air, and the pollution they would emit into the air or water. This wasn't something I planned to do or something I wanted to do with a network of allies near and far. Levine also stood up to the petrochemical industry in New Zealand and to local, state and federal officials. Most of her efforts are channeled through a faith-based environmental justice group she founded five years ago, Rise St. James, and the coalition is now on a winning streak. Formosa Plastics has been stopped in its tracks, blocked at least for now from building a massive 4.9 billion manufacturing complex on 2,400 acres in Welcome, Louisiana, less than two miles from her home. Thank God for her work. The Anglican Communion has five marks of mission, the fifth of which is our concern and work towards the environment. 
Pope Francis' prayer directed towards creation and its preservation mm -hmm. includes the petition, teach us to discover the worth of each thing, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognise that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light. <clears throat> In our benefits cycle of prayer, we invite us to pray for voluntary organisations, and so we do for churches, for those who look after the Millennium Green, those who look after mental health, for people of all ages, our dementia care group and mencap in the town, the men's shed, we pray to you for the volunteer centre and uh, the rural coffee caravan, and uh, all who support and encourage at all levels, maintaining buildings for public use, the, the library friends, the school friends, and the friends of this building. And we pray that they will be successful and all find um, office holders as treasurers, wardens or equivalent chairs, secretaries, that they may be sustained in their contribution to our local community. We pray to bring more people in, whether they're living local and working, perhaps giving up work, whether they change the circumstance, children leaving for college or school, a bit more time perhaps on their hands, uh, maybe just moved here. And uh, we thank you for that continued generosity of spirit. And we pray it will grow. We thank you for our people. Today we pray for those volunteers in post in our St Michael group, for Jane at St Michael Cookley, for Chris and Janet at St Margaret's Heveningham, for Emma at St Mary's Huntingfield, for Lee and Ken at St Mary's Walpole. Pray for the other officers, secretaries and treasurers in those places, and for those on the PCC's electoral role, congregation and communities. Continue to pray for growth and encouragement and support. Um, from and to the church in those places. And we pray for a secretary for Heveningham and we pray for them. We pray for those other PCCs that require more people to get involved with them. I'm thinking particularly of uh, Blyford, Bramfield, Holton perhaps, and thanking God for the growth that we've suddenly seen in Halesworth. And as we remember those in the electoral rolls, we've got names at Cookley, including Roy, Robert, Katrina, Margaret, Mark, Nicola, Valerie, Robert, Joanna, Susan, Allen, <clears throat> and in the hunting field, David, generally Susan, David, Marion, Patrick, Sally, Anne, Roger, Jackie, Judith, Barry, Jacqueline, Jane, Tony, Dooney, and Sue. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <laughs> Shakusha <laughs> Before <laughs> Almighty God, who in your providence chose your servant Patrick to be the apostle of the Irish people, keep alive in us the fire of the faith he kindled and strengthen us in our pilgrimage towards the light of everlasting life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God as our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube and Facebook.